Welcome to our lecture online. Having another closer look at the transfer coefficient beyond what McAdams had done in his book that he written a long time ago, there we realized that there was going to be an adjustment to the transmission co to the transfer coefficient because of the delta t. The larger the delta t, the greater the transmission coefficient. But now we can see that depending upon the, ge the geometry, wow, I'm barely able to put that out there, the geometry of the object, there's going to be additional adjustments to that equation. Notice that we have a delta T divided by L. Now in this case, we have a cylinder, which is 20 centimeters tall with a diameter of 5 centimeters, which is subject to airflow at 300 K while the cylinder is at 400 K. At the bottom here, there's an insulating material to isolate the situation. Notice that we have an equivalent length at the top, which is 0.9 times the diameter. This is kind of a, a, a method that we typically use to approximate a distance that the airflow travels across a circular a surface instead of a rectangular surface, because obviously these portions of the surface are missing, so we take 0.9 times the diameter as being the equivalent length of 4.5 centimeters. Now notice we have different transmission coefficients or transfer coefficients for the top and the side because we'll have a different constant here for the parallel flow, the flow that's parallel to the side and the flow that's perpendicular to the surface of the cylinder. So these will be different coefficients and we'll t learn later in later videos how to calculate those. And then notice that we have a, the ratio of the difference in the temperature between the cylinder and the air and we have to divide that by the length over which the air travels or the length against which the air travels. So notice that the length is 4.5 centimeters, which is 0 0.045 meters. And so when we take this and raise it to one fourth power, we have a factor there of 6.87, which raises the transfer coefficient at the top. Notice that we do the same kind of thing for the bottom. We have delta t, which is 100, and the length in this case will be 20 centimeters. So 100 divided by 20 is 5 to the 1 fourth power is 1.5, a much smaller adjustment factor because we're dealing with a larger, a larger surface on the vertical surface of the cylinder. Now, what does that mean when this is larger and this is smaller? Remember the concept of the resistance to the heat flow, which is 1 over H times A. A larger H means a smaller resistance. A smaller H means a larger resistance, a larger resistance to the heat flow. So if you have a larger resistance, you have less heat flow, smaller resistance, you have greater heat flow. So now let's try to make sense of that. So this means larger H, which means smaller resistance. So this is smaller R, this is larger R, and a smaller R means higher heat flow. So Q dot is greater. In this case, larger R means Q dot is smaller, which means we have a higher heat flow from the top of the cylinder in comparison relative to the size than we do on the sides of the cylinder. So that's kind of an interesting way to realize that there's adjustment factors that have to do with the physical geometry of the object by which the heat flows. Uh, the air flows, I should say, and how much heat is transferred from the surface to the air due to the geometry and due to the change in the temperature. And that is how it's done.